Are you still using an LLC for holding title to your investment real estate? I'm here to tell you that there's something much, much easier, and we're gonna talk about many other topics today that are important as well. My name is James. First of all, why do we use these business organizations? Why would you use an LLC? You use an LLC because of the fact you've been told that you can get limited liability and asset protection. Okay, sounds good. So who does this come from? This comes from the legal community, comes from the real estate clubs, comes from the Secretary of State's office, comes from the promoters. All want you to set up these LLCs. Now, what do you need to do after that to set up an LLC? You need to file a name registration. You need articles of organization. You need to have a manager. Well, what if you don't want your name on it? Then you're gonna to have to hire somebody else. Then you've gotta pay franchise taxes. Maybe you got gross receipts tax as well. And then you have a resident agent which makes it easy to get legal service. But of course, we're looking for limited liability. And if you don't do everything that they say, you don't file all these, these paperwork, you don't pay all these fees, then you're gonna lose their benevolent blessings and that's called the corporate veil. So let's talk about some of the things that make it much, much easier. And that is you can use a business trust company. Business trust company has been around for hundreds of years. It started in England back in the early 1800s when corporations to get a corporate charter used to require an act of parliament. It was very, very difficult to do. So the business guys, they couldn't wait. They had to get on with their things. And so the trust instrument was working its way through society and the courts. And so they used the business trust in order to operate their businesses. Now there's some other terms that they use for it, but ostensibly that's what it was. And then it came to the United States as well, and so we saw people continue to use the business trust because of the fact that there was a prohibition by states for corporations to own real estate. So why haven't the attorneys or the Secretary of State told you about these business trusts a long, long time ago? Well, it's two reasons. One is education, and there is no business trust education in law school. If you want to find any kind of attorney that knows anything about business trust, you need to find one that graduated law school before 1976. And secondly, there is no business trust question on the multi-state bar exam. I can guarantee you that. The other part of it that's really more important is there's no money into it. Because once you set up a business trust company, just like the guys in England did, you don't need permission from the government. You can do it all yourself. And the Secretary of State's not going to make any money from you because you don't need a registration. I mean, these are really important issues to, to, to know about. So what else haven't you been told about? You haven't been told about business identity theft. You know about personal identity theft. Well, did you know that business identity theft is even a bigger target because of the fact it's bigger money? Now, here's an example. There was a company, an LLC in Nevada. They had an expensive piece of property, a valuable piece of property that they owned free and clear. And so the bad guys figured out that they owned it free and clear. They went to the Secretary of State's office. They hacked the account. They changed the manager for the LLC. And they went and got a, a $5 million, $3 million hard money loan against this particular piece of property. Escrow looked at it. Oh, yeah, well, that's the right manager. I think, you know, whoever they changed it to, John Smith. So everything was clean. But actually, it was a big, huge fraud. So you've got exposure not only from an equitable side, but also from a legal title side because of the fact that you're in two different databases, the Secretary of State and also the Recorder's Office. Now, what about Wyoming and Nevada? You know, you've heard all about that. Let's go there, let's go there. Well, why are you going to go there? Well, that's because they have said, oh, well, we're not going to disclose who your shareholders are. But think about this. Any state that you go to, any place that you're going to register from, you're not going to have any disclosure for who the shareholders are, but you're going to have a disclosure of your, of your manager, you're going to have disclosure of your resident agent. So in that particular context, what difference does it make what state you go to? Now here's the backstory between Nevada and Wyoming, and that is that Nevada was broke. The state budget was broke about 20 some odd years ago, and I think Wyoming's had the same problem as well. So they said, well, what can we do to beef up our revenues here? Oh, well, let's, we can become the Delaware West, Delaware Light. And so that's what they did. So the legislative boys got together, passed a few laws, and said, hey, you know, we'll provide some disclosure. But again, you still got this registration. You got that breadcrumb trail. So that's how they filled up their, their state budget. So they turned on the Hoover, and so now we saw the revenues coming in. Now you might remember back in South Dakota, back I think it was in the early 80s, that's when you know, the big banks went there. You know, they had an interest rate uh, cap or there was no cap on it. And so the banks went to South Dakota. So South Dakota was the same thing like with Nevada and Wyoming for, this, for the legislator to change the rules. Bring these companies here. 
See, back at the, about 100 years ago, they had the same problem this, it, with Delaware. Delaware changed all the rules to attract businesses. We also had that in New Jersey. So this is kind of a, a background, if you will, on, on why people go to these states. But again, it's a breadcrumb trail. Now here's something else, and that is it's called the Corporate Transparency Act. Corporate Transparency Act is going to require all reporting companies to um, disclose who their controlling beneficiaries are, their, benef their controlling owners name, address, phone number, kids, grandkids, I don't know. And it's going to be connected with the banks as well. The whole idea is to combat any, uh, money laundering. Okay, but money laundering, dirty money in the system, Panama Papers, all that, all that stuff, uh, basically is about 3 to 5% of the world economy. So 95% of us are having to do all this extra work in order to try to clean up the system. But here's the thing with this anti-money laundering. The politicians are saying, oh, well, this is what you need to do. But where do politicians get their money from? They get their money from dark money groups. So what they're saying is, don't do what we do, but do what we say. You know, we're going to get our money in our place. We're not going to tell you who, but we want you to tell us everything about you. Anyhow, that's Corporate Transparency Act. Now, you also have what I talk about equitable title. Equitable title is really your biggest exposure. I mean, your liability insurance is always your first line of defense. But see, if you own property, you don't have any uh, debt against the property, and you own it free and clear, that's really where your biggest exposure is, is equitable title. Everybody talks about legal title, but equitable title is really what you got to be careful about. Now, there's also land trust. We've talked about those. You've heard them from the attorneys talk uh, about land trust. But the land trust, there's no real asset protection behind them. Uh, there's no limited liability, you get a little bit of privacy. Land trusts were a function of an instrument from Chicago title in order to get a partial releases on a large subdivision. So who uses these? Uh, these business trusts are used by real estate investment trusts. You ever heard of a REIT or a mutual fund? I mean, these are, these are big guys operating them. And then you've got Walmart, Walmart Real Estate Business Trust. Go look that up. I mean, you can find that on Google. And so if LLCs were so great, why, does, why doesn't, why doesn't uh, is Walmart using the business trust format? And why is the REIT using the format? Well, I mean, there are some good reasons for it because of uh, SEC registration issues and disclosures and taxes. But here's the point. These business trusts, you can register or they can be unregistered. Now, how can you use these in, this, in our real estate situation? You can use them for title to your real estate. You can use them for your purchase contracts. You always want to have an entity on your purchase contract. That's always safer. You can use them for trustee lending. Okay, you got a group of guys, you know, you want to go into a pool, use a business trust. There's no registration. Also, property management, you can use it uh, for property management as well. I mean, they're really a tremendously powerful tool. And here's something else, is because of the fact that they're unlisted, they don't have any registration with the Secretary of State, you're going to keep your information at least out of one database. And so what we're going to do with these business trusts, you anonymize the deeds. So you can do deed, you can anonymize your deeds, but you can't do it with an LLC. These are some of the advantages that you get with these business trusts. Also, the trustees, there's no registration for the trustees. So if a, if a tenant or a tenant's attorney wants to come after you, who are they going to sue? They've got to try to find this trustee. Well, is that trustee, what state is that trustee in? It's not like a registered agent for an LLC. What does all this mean? Okay, how did you learn all this stuff, James? It's only taken me 27 years to learn all this stuff and to make this video for you guys. So you really got two options here if you're looking for asset protection, you're looking for limited liability. You got your LLCs in this particular situation with real estate or your business trust. Okay, your LLCs are high maintenance, they're online, down at the recorder's office, down at the Secretary of State's office, and of course they're easy to serve. And with the business trust, they're unlisted. You can't find them. There's no registration. They're low maintenance, and they're really simple to operate. I mean, the, the LLC's got a lot of moving parts. The business trusts are really, really simple. So that's kind of it. I mean, if you've had enough of the hamster wheel from the Secretary of State, you know, look at the business trust. See, the Secretary of State needs you. You don't need them, not with these business trusts. That's the point. So watch this video a couple of times and internalize what this is all about and go get yourself a business trust. And if you'd like our help, we got a business trust e-seminar you can check out. And I've got a new real estate module there to help you with escrow and insurance and many of the other factors uh, related to real estate. And that's it. And this is really important, guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much.